shapes. If you're looking at triangles, circles, squares and rectangles and so on, when you put them together in a certain order you can get a shape that we that we recognize and that's what we've got here. We've, we're working with those basic shapes. They might not be, might not be um, exact perfect triangles and circles and so on but the basics are there and if you keep that in mind most artists work this way to, to get their framework down because that's all a composition is, is a framework like a, building a house it's a foundation for us to structure the rest of the work on and um, and like everything just because you put it down doesn't mean to say that you can't wipe it off or you can um, adjust it it's just a beginning it's just a structure that can be moved about and um, to help us to help us um, achieve our aims so you're not locked into anything always remember that and that's why I keep everything loose and sketchy I don't like a tight structure to start with because it it takes away that um, that free and loose style that uh, looks wonderful in paintings it's a relaxed style that relaxed style comes with experience and the more you practice the more quickly it will find its way into your work well the head's shaping up fairly fairly well I'm making a little adjustment there on the back of the neck there and um, just in a moment I'll Put in where the body's going to be, where the body's going to lay. There's a line there. It's laying on a, a concrete pavement, a cement pavement, and that's that's the body line. And uh, that's probably about where our eye line would be. So if you were doing a landscape, that would be the horizon line. Not that you need to worry about that in this case. That just happens to be where it is. But take, if you look at it uh, from the photographer from the photographer's point of view that took the shot you can see that that line is pretty much lining up with our eye line so um, that will assist later on in the in the recession of the painting the, the depth of the painting <clears throat> there's a couple of um, little cracks down below in the in the cement pavement too which will will help the composition, the angled lines which will lead the eye into the overall picture. And I'm putting in some areas where markings will be going and um, just sketching them in very very loosely. But the mass of the body and the dog's just laying there, it's fast asleep and it's laying on its paws and its legs at the front so we can't see them and of course the rear legs and paws are out of the frame so the main focus is on the on the dog and it's um, the fact that it's um, having a bit of a snooze yeah, I'm working on some of the angles I'm thinking uh, it's a good idea to think your way around a painting and always look at it and stop every now and again and consider things. Now I've changed brushes, I've got the large flat bristle, it's a number 12 and um, the paint I'm putting on now is burnt umber which is a, a brown, it's a dark brown and um, this colour varies from uh, in diff with different manufacturers, different makers it's not always exactly the same from one maker to another but um, this particular one has a slight reddish quality to it so it's not a what I would call a blue brown it's more of a, a reddish brown and uh, I'll I'll fill in um, a lot of the shape area and I have to constantly be aware of the fact that um, the, the direction the lights coming from because if I if I fill the whole shape in just with one flat colour I'll lose form I'll lose my um, shape so I have to be aware of the direction of the light so there will be light sides and um, dark sides shadows 
and that's a good idea to keep in mind when you're first starting um, the painting that have it in the back of your mind a, a point of direction where the light's coming from and um, paint according to that I like to get my darks in fairly early and they say that if you get the darks in, the shadows in, the lights will take care of themselves. That's partly true, of course, you still have to paint in highlights. And, um, but painting and drawing is more about form, the understanding of dark and light, than it is about colour. A lot of people say to me, you know, how can I mix colours, how can I learn about colour? And the best way to learn about colour is to not worry about it and concentrate on form, in other words, dark and light, and work more in monochrome to begin with, which is just working with a single colour and maybe um, another light colour, and gradually, by mixing colour, a few colours here and there, you'll start to understand colour and how it works because you've got to remember that there are only three primary colours blue, yellow and red and so what about black and white? well they're greys we do use them, I don't use black very much at all I find I don't need to, if I want a very dark colour extreme dark then I'll combine red and blue together and I'll vary the um, proportions to work out what kind of a, a dark I want and if I add a little bit of white to those two colours I'll get a grey and then I can add more blue if I want a cool grey a bit more red if I want a warm grey that's basically how colour works now getting back to our subject I've, um, I'm starting to you see how the ear and the side of the head have um, come together and now we've got basically the ear and the head are just one shape on the right I'm talking about that will be adjusted shortly I'm putting some burr number up the top there which is the, the head colour goes up into the back of the animal's body <coughs> now you'll notice that the the burr number is starting to partly mix with the, the burr number the brown and the yellow are coming together and because they're, they're very similar in um, they're very compatible it's probably a better way to describe it they mingle together and they um, combine and you don't have this hard light line you'll notice too that I'm not staying within the confines of my lines they're starting to mingle that's very important because you'll uh, you get a better feeling of the form if you allow your brush to run into across the lines and let the lines start to become part of the painting rather than divide the painting and divide the subject. I'm looking at the eye sockets now and I'll bring in some dark a little later uh, shortly and um, I'm just widening the bridge or the area between the nose oh, just sorry the the eyes and um, the, the body, the head's starting to um, establish itself bring in a little bit more heavier colour, stronger colour, a little bit more rich and uh, I, when I brush I use my brush strokes to follow the form that way I have a feeling or an understanding of the, the shape so in other words, if there's a curve along the cheek, I allow my brush strokes to follow that that curve, and uh, or across across a forehead or something like that. Now I've added some ultramarine blue here, and um, I haven't cleaned the brush. So what's happening now? As I'm brushing, I haven't I haven't pre-mixed the brown and the blue. I've allowed them to mix as of as I'm brushing and they combine beautifully and this gives me a dark, an extreme dark rather than use black, then black kills colour so um, here's a little lesson for you to try and keep black out of your palette for a little while at least 
and you'll learn more about colour by playing with colours and putting warms and cool 